I rise today to mark a very somber milestone. Nearly uh, one year ago, Colorado and the nation were shocked by the horrific scene at an Aurora movie theater in my home state of Colorado. Even before the sun rose that Friday, July 20th, 2012, we began hearing of a senseless mass shooting that took the lives of 12 innocent people and injured 70 more. Mr. President, today I want to mark the anniversary of this tragedy and to honor the strength that so many Coloradans have shown both on that day and in, in the weeks and months since. The Aurora Theater shooting shook us. It, it shocked us. It outraged us. But as I said one year ago, it did not break us. Even today, we are seeing that the legacy of this terrible tragedy is not the horror of that day, Mr. President, but rather the courage and resilience of the people who've refused to let this event define their lives. Take, for example, 18-year-old Zach Goldich, who endured surgery and weeks of recovery so he could continue with his football career and become a repeat state discus champion. The Denver Post recently named him the winner of their Adversity Conquered Through Excellence Award. And this fall, he will begin his freshman year as an offensive lineman at Colorado State University. Or take Marcus Weaver, who was shot twice but now hosts a weekly radio show in Denver that spotlights great Americans who are making a difference in their communities. Marcus also works with his church to help people who've struggled through addiction or incarceration, and he now travels the country inspiring others with his story and pushing them to take charge of their lives. Mr. President, these are just two of literally countless examples of the perseverance of people who were affected by the Aurora shooting. Zach and Marcus's strength and their actions define us as Americans. That's something in which we can take great pride. It's the kind of strength we honor in remembering this tragedy now a year later. In particular, we look back and we remember young men like 26-year-old John Blunk and 24-year-old Alexander Tevis, who literally sacrificed their lives to protect their friends. They put themselves in between uh, the shooter uh, and their friends in that movie theater. And then there were countless police and other first responders who rushed to the scene to care for the wounded and to stop the shooter before he could injure others. Mr. President, Colorado has known too many tragedies these past several years, from the Aurora Theater shooting to wildfires in Colorado Springs, Fort Collins, and elsewhere that have threatened and destroyed entire communities and left hundreds of our friends and neighbors without homes. We've seen that same spirit of sacrifice and resilience as firefighters and community members have banded together to fight the Black Forest Fire, the West Fork Complex Fire, and other blazes that have threatened entire communities across Colorado this year. This Saturday, on, on this one-year anniversary of the Aurora Movie Theater shooting, let's take time to remember those who've lost their lives and to honor the resilience of our neighbors who press on with their lives undaunted by this terrible act. In that spirit, Mr. President, I want to read into the congressional record the names of the 12 people who lost their lives one year ago. Let's never forget these names. Matt McQuinn, Michaela Medic, Jessica Gawi, Gordon Cowden, Jesse Childress, John Larimer, Jonathan Blunk, Veronica Mosier Sullivan, Alex Sullivan, Alexander Tevis, Rebecca Wingo, Alexander Boyk. I hope we can draw strength from the tragic loss of these 12 wonderful, beautiful people and that it leads us to redouble our efforts to be better people, to be more understanding to our friends and more loving to our families, and aspire to live our lives with the courage that the people of Aurora and Colorado have shown over the course of this last year. Mr. President, I think it could go without saying that I believe that the leaders here in Washington could learn from their courage. The victims of Aurora haven't let setbacks stop them from achieving great things 
and making their communities a better place to live. They, in fact, have refused to allow the word victim to define them. As I conclude, uh, Mr. President, I want to say, of course, we have still uh, work to do to prevent future mass shootings. There are many common sense steps that we can and we must take to reduce senseless gun violence. But today is not a time for policy debate. Today is a day to remember the victims and to honor the heroes from that terrible day last year and to commit ourselves to never forgetting their memories.